Alright guys, today I'm going to review She Has Her Mother's Laugh The Powers, Perversions, and Potential of Heredity by Carl Zimmer So this is, it's a pretty big book uh, It had a lot of really great reviews I think it won some awards And it's all about heredity and, and all the different aspects of heredity because it had such good reviews, and there's a couple of reviews on the back that are especially notable. One, Robert Sapolsky, who wrote Behave, one of my favorite science books. He loved the book. Ed Yong, he wrote a book about the microbiome that I, I liked. Uh, there, there's some big names on the back of this book that endorsed it. Because this book was so big, and with the reviews and everything, I really expected this to be kind of the authoritative book on heredity to really set the standard for the subject and really inform my beliefs about heredity because I've read a lot about genes and a lot of different science things how people act a lot of different various aspects but I have nothing that's specific to heredity because there's a lot of extra stuff that goes into heredity uh, so I came in this book again with a lot of expectations for what this book was going to be for me and when I started reading it uh, initially I was kind of disappointed this book is kind of chaotic and all over the place at the beginning. And really, after I read a few chapters, I tried to think about why I wasn't really getting into it or why I had weird feelings about it. And it really comes down to this. There's two basic approaches to how to write a science book. And the first approach, uh, the book will go through the history of a scientific topic and really trace it from the beginning, you know, chronologically and work its way forward, going from, you know, the initial beliefs to the science at the time, then what scientists invented what and how that changed our perspective. And then the book will kind of work through history and just follow the narrative of our understanding of that scientific topic all the way up to the, the modern era. This is how Siddhartha Mukherjee's books are, The Emperor of All Maladies, the book about cancer, The Gene, that's how that's written. It's very similar to how A v Brief History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. That's how those books are written. Uh, it's a very standard format because if you're going to tell the history of something, starting at the beginning is a very obvious way of telling that story to th so that the story will make sense to everyone. The second way to, to write a science book is to not worry about history so much and just try to communicate the current state of our knowledge on a subject and then just go kind of topic by topic or however it works and say how we know what we know, why everything is the way it is, and really just communicate as articulately as possible the knowledge that we have on a subject. And this is how Why We Sleep is written. This is how Behave by Robert Sapolsky is written. A lot of other science books are written in a very similar manner. It's very similar to how subjects are taught in school. Like if you go to college and you take a topic on uh, anatomy or biology, that's how that will be structured. Just a summary of everything we know right now just topic by topic and really explaining it pretty procedurally. This book has a weird hybrid approach. It goes topic by topic, but within each topic, it will go back and tell the history of that topic. So as you move through the book, you kind of move forwards and backwards in time. And it's really it, it's jarring in the beginning because you're not really in tune with the author's style. And... The way he jumps around, he'll introduce topics, and if you know anything about that topic, there won't seem to be enough foundation uh, for introducing that topic. So in this book, it kind of starts in like the late 1800s, early 1900s, right? You know, kind of in the run-up to the eugenics movement. And then in the next chapter, he introduces genetics and starts talking about genetics. But if you've read anything about science, you know, there is a huge backstory to how we got to genetics and really how that transformed our understanding. So without really establishing any base for the book, he just goes into genetics a little bit. And for me, that was like really like put me on edge because I knew there was a huge story there. And I was really unsure about where the author was going, why he was introducing it the way he was introducing it. Because when the book starts, it does seem like he's going to tell a chronological story, just go kind of start at the beginning and go forward through time. But that's really not the way the book ended up being written. He kind of jumps around a lot and he tells stories to lay a foundation to come back much later in the book and kind of connect bits together and, and weave a narrative. So throughout the first half of this book, 
I really thought that I was going to end up disliking the book when I got to the end because I really I wasn't impressed with the first half of this book. It's a very long book. And with a long book, one of the things you really need to have happen is you need the author to really grab your attention and, and carry that attention forward because you need a lot of momentum to get through the bulk of a book that's this large. You need something to keep you going so you don't burn out halfway through. And with this book, it's so, it's long. I just, it didn't grab me at the beginning and it was kind of all over the place. And so I really stumbled at the beginning and I didn't, it didn't grip me. And so I felt like as I got, you know, in the first third of the book, I felt like there was no momentum to it. And that really was a drag. I didn't want to pick the book up and keep reading it at times. It, it really, I wasn't motivated to continue. But thankfully that really changes as you get farther into the book, about halfway through the book. He kind of stops talking about the history so much and he really he moves into the present and he really starts talking a lot more about heredity and and what we know now. And for me, that's really when the book picked up and gained a lot of momentum and I was really interested in it. And then near the end, he starts connecting things back to the beginning and, you know, little stories he told at the beginning that I thought didn't have a point ended up connecting with something he told near the end of the book. And so by the time I finished the book, uh, I really enjoyed the book, but I didn't know I was going to like it for the first third of the book, the first half of the book. And I think if I went back and I reread the book, I would really enjoy it a lot more. Knowing that the author w really knew what he was talking about and was going to put together a, a good book would have kind of put me at ease when I'm wondering why I'm reading what I'm reading in some of the some of the early parts of the book. So... I think I would recommend this book kind of hesitantly, though. Uh, it's, it's a big book, and it kind of touches a lot of different topics. I don't think this would be the first book I read on this subject. I would start with, if, you, if you're interested in the history of this topic, I would start with something like A Brief History of Nearly Everything. It's super entertaining, very gripping, easy to read, and it covers a lot of the basics and gives you a framework for understanding kind of the history of science. And then I would read something like Behave by Robert Sapolsky to really get a great understanding of the modern state of information about what makes humans do what they do. Uh, maybe Siddhartha Mukherjee's The Gene. But if you've already had those books or similar books or you had courses in college and you feel pretty comfortable around the topic, then you could go ahead and pick this book up and you probably won't have any issues with it because even though it's kind of sporadic in the beginning and he jumps around if you have a, a good enough base of information you can kind of place these different tidbits in a, a much more cohesive kind of timeline or or understanding of the history of science so that it's not so chaotic you know you can kind of make sense of it a little bit more but I think this book definitely has a place on a bookshelf it's a good book there's a lot of great stories in here about heredity and about how we use it and where it's going in the future and how it might be misused. And there's a lot of good stuff in this book. And I, in the end, I really, I did enjoy the book. And if people put in the time to kind of get to where they are ready to read this book, I think it's a great book to read. But again, this would not be the first book I would read on this topic. But after you have a big enough base in the, the topic, then this is a great book to pick up and give a read. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is my new space for recording videos. It's not really decorated yet, but I got all the cameras and everything set up and I'll probably be changing that in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.